You are now listening to the earth slowly moving beneath your feet. Recorded at the Lamont Doherty Earth Observatory on our Streck Eisen STS-2 seismometer, the sound you hear is actually the sonified seismic data of the ambient, background, omnipresent motion of the ground. The massive plates of the Earth are storing and releasing energy as they slide past each other during normal, everyday ho-hum plate tectonics. A huge sudden motion on a fault releases the energy stored in the plates. That big sudden motion or rupture sends out waves of motion both on the surface of the earth and through the deep interior all the way through the core. The event is called an earthquake. Only when we're near the earthquake source can we actually feel these waves. Measured by seismometers around the globe, the waves are also too slow for us to hear. So we compile the seismic data and speed it up into our range of hearing. The magnitude of an earthquake is a measure of the energy released during the rupture. The closer you are to the source, the louder the sound. The bigger the magnitude, the longer the sound sustains and decays. We'll play seismograms recorded by the U.S. Array, a vast network of 400 seismometers leapfrogging across the United States over about 10 years. Seismologist Chuck Ammon developed a great way to visualize the data called Ground Motion Visualizations, or GMV. We have added our sounds to accompany the movies. We will present three earthquakes with increasing magnitude, starting with the lowest, the recent unusual event in Virginia, a magnitude 5.8. The second is a magnitude 7.4 earthquake in Japan, which was a foreshock to the third earthquake we will listen to, the magnitude 9.1 great earthquake that occurred in March of this year. You are now listening to the U.S. Array in the Central United States. On August 23rd, at 12.51 p.m. East Coast Time, a magnitude 5.8 earthquake occurred in Virginia. You might have felt it in New York if you were sitting at your desk or doing something quiet. About 200 million years ago, earthquakes were happening all the time in Virginia, as North America was drifting away from Africa and Europe. Here's what was measured by the U.S. Array. And now a little slower. The sounds we just played were recorded on the green colored northern array of seismometers. Now let's compare what we just heard with the signals recorded in the orange colored southern array. Northern array, Southern Array. The difference is probably related to the structure and properties of the crust, the southern crust being younger, weaker, and more jello-like. On March 9th at 11.45 in the morning, Japan time, a large earthquake occurred off Honshu, the largest island in Japan. It was a large but not an unusual event. There was no way to know that it would be called a foreshock to the great earthquake two days later. Here is what was recorded for six hours in the US array. And now a bit slower. On March 11th, 2011, at 2.47 in the afternoon, Japan time, the largest recorded earthquake in Japanese history occurred. 
and produced a tsunami that caused horrible destruction of cities on the coast. This event was one of the largest earthquakes ever recorded on Earth. Here we play six hours of data. And a bit slower. Here, we play a movie with no sound of a simulation of the tsunami wave moving across the ocean made by scientists at the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. You have seen and heard seismic waves from three different earthquakes as recorded by the U.S. Array. Here we play them one more time, increasing in magnitude. The sounds are different mainly because of their varying magnitudes and their distances from the earthquake source. A lot of things happen to the waves as they travel around the globe. 